in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you. No one compares to my God. No one compares. 
compares to my God. No one compares to my God. To my God. To my God. No one compares to my God. No one compares to my God. No one compares to my God. To my God. To my God. No one compares to my God. No one compares to my God. No one compares to my God. To my God. To my God. No one compares to my God. No one compares to my God. No one compares to my God, to my God, to my God. No one compares to my God. No one compares to my God. No one compares to my God, to my God, to my God. Yeah, yeah. Our God is great. Yeah, yeah. Our God is great. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You know, this morning I was talking about how we easily go from one area to the other so easily we forget what the Lord has done for us. If I was to ask you tonight how many are born again, you would lift your hand up, and that's the greatest miracle you could have received at any time. Because without being born again, without being born again, you cannot, the Bible says, enter the kingdom of heaven. You cannot enter. You must be born again. Now, there's a concept of people that believe you know, they can smoke their dope and do all kinds of crazy stuff, drink their, their, their Budweiser's and their Coors, and, and do all kinds of stuff, and they think they're going to go to heaven like that. You cannot. You got to let the Lord, you got to give everything you are to Jesus. When you give everything you are to Jesus, he'll do the work. How many understand that here tonight? He will do the work. He knows what he's doing. Hallelujah, I was thinking about it, amen, tonight I was, I was thinking about it as, as uh, I was looking out here, and I remember Brother Tim, Pastor Tim, he's, he's pastoring in Decano, but one day, I don't, he wasn't a pastor, I found Tim in a park, all drunk, he was an alcoholic, he probably did other things too, but, but he was an alcoholic. And, and, and now you look at him, you see him, and, and he's pastoring the church Amen. for the Lord. Hey, that's a blessing. That, th those, are, those are powerful miracles. Every one of us that is born again, the Lord will give you that mighty miracle. Man, he'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And there ain't no devil in hell can erase it from there. Are you with me, church? But listen to me. Why are you saved? Why are you? I'm not saying by what. I'm saying why. Por qué? Why are you saved? Por qué eres salvo? Just just to say you, you go to church or just to say you, you, you're a good kid or, or what? No. Listen to me. There's a world out there. A world out there that needs you. You got to bring that world to Christ. 
You, you've got to be the light in the midst of this dark world. We're living in a dark time, a real dark time. And you've got to be that light. The world has got to look at you and say, man, I want what you got. And, 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 and they're going to go after it. Is there anybody here with me? If, if, if not, if, you, if, if you're not going to be a light, then what are you going to be to the Lord? We, we got to be a light. What a mighty God we serve. I like the way some of you look at me. God is looking for this church. Listen to me. I don't, I don't pastor another church here. I don't, I don't get involved with whatever they're doing or whatever. That's all up to them and the Lord. But I do want to tell you, I do get involved with this church. And I know that the Lord here wants us to reach the lost from the outside. Bring them into the Lord. Bring them into the Lord. So I want you to go with me. We're going to go to the, the book of Mark, chapter 16. The book of Mark, the whole book of Mark, if you go to the, from the beginning to the end, you're going to find the miracle working power of God. And you're not only find the miracle working power of God, but you're going to find faith. I'm glad to see sister back here from uh, Kentucky or somewhere around there. God bless you, Ita. And uh, I saw you this morning, and I thought, I'm going to say hi to her, but I, you disappeared, man. So I said, so I told your daughter this morning, I said, tell her hi for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Her, her daughters keep having babies, and so she keeps having to go see them. And, man, they're going to wear you out. <laughs> Praise God. I want you to read this with me from verse 14 down. Because, see, faith is the most powerful possession you can have. It's the most powerful quality that you can possess as a born-again believer. Faith and prayer are what the Lord looks for in every believer. Faith. You know, sometimes you find people praying, but without faith. You got to have faith. Faith has no feelings. Faith has action. Faith has no feeling. It has action. Whatever you believe, that's what you're going to do. Whatever you believe, that's what you're going to get into. Faith is the most powerful as substance anyone can experience or have in their life. So look what he says here. Afterwards, he appeared to the 11 apostles themselves. He went back to the 11 apostles. Remember, Judas had already hung himself. And he went to the 11 apostles. And they reclined at a table. And he reproved and reproached them. Now look at this. He reproved and reproached them. You know what he did? He got on their case. I'm giving it to you in your terms. He got on their case. Why did he get on their case? Because look at this. For their unbelief. Look, look over here. Unbelief is the enemy of faith. In fact, I want to go a little deeper than that. Unbelief is the enemy of Christianity. There are many Christians who carry that spirit of unbelief. They, they just cannot believe. I mean, 
I don't care what goes on in life, they cannot believe. See, unbelief destroys faith. Unbelief, I remember one day David Wilkerson preached a message and he said these words, he said, unbelief is the greatest sin the church commits. You think it's all the other stuff. But he said, unbelief is the greatest sin the church commits. Unbelief. Are you with me, church? Why unbelief? Because unbelief will paralyze you. It will not allow you to function. It won't let you move, move ahead with Faith, faith, listen to me, faith sees the, the, the object before it's even seen. Faith moves before you even think of moving. Faith is an action word. Faith is powerful. If you can believe it. Jesus put it this way when they said, all things are powerful. All things are possible. Look at your neighbor and say, all things are possible. Todo lo es posible. Si puedes creer. Todo, all things are possible if thou can believe. Unbelief is, is heavy. Because it won't let you see God move in action. And it will paralyze you. And by the time you know it, you're, you're, you're functioning in the flesh. See, Jesus, now, now, now I want to I wanna go a little bit with this because some of us have a misconception of being born again. Okay, but being born again is a new life. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says all the old things are passed away. Everything you were, you were doing, everything you were involved with, everything that was pertaining to your life, is gone. And he says, and everything has become, has become new. A new life, a new beginning, everything new. Are you with me, church? What happens to the church? What happens to the body? Well... He calls the 11 disciples together and he tells them, hey, I, I carried you for three and a half years. I fed you, I clothed you, I did everything for you. And, and you still don't believe who I am? This is what Jesus is saying. You still don't believe that I am the Son of God? We, we don't come out and tell the Lord, well, I don't believe you're the son of God and all that earthly because, brother, we have a little bit of fear. Not much, but we have a little bit. <laughs> but, but I will tell you something. Our actions speak louder than our words. Right. See, we begin to act on what we really believe. That's heavy. You were saved you were brought into the kingdom of God so you could have a new beginning, a new life, a different life. Listen to me, a spiritual life. No one could give you this life. Jesus walked up to Nicodemus or Nicodemus walked up to Jesus and told him, Lord, what do I have to do to enter the kingdom of heaven? What do I have to do? Listen, the kingdom of heaven begins the moment you're born again. Before you even get to heaven, you're already in the kingdom. He said, what must I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus told him, you must be born again. He said, Nicodemus, you're, you're, you know the Bible inside and out and you don't know what you got to do. See, some of us get the Bible... And we try to use the Bible to give us reason or excuse not to do what God wants us to do. 
not to follow. But we, can't do, we cannot do that. We got we to gotta take the word of God and use it the way it really should be. It'll, it'll set you free. It'll bless you. Like you have never been blessed. So he tells Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you got to be born again. Now imagine this. Look over here at me. Why did he use that term? Why couldn't he have used, why could he not have used another term? He could have. Nicodemus, you got to change, or Nicodemus, so. No, he said, you must be born again. Look at that little baby you're holding in your arms. Look at the innocency of that little baby. He says, when, 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 I let, when you let me into your heart, I'm going to make you just like that little baby. Amen. Your old ways are going to go. You're, you're not. You're not going to be. You're not going to be the same person you were before. You're not. You're not going to be a complainer. You're. You're not going to be a come out a gossiper. You're not going to be a backbiter. You're not going to be none of the stuff. None of the stuff that that you did when you were in the world. You won't do with the Lord. He'll change you for good. He'll transform you from the inside out. What a powerful God. And, and yes, I know there are some people that say, but pastor, I'm human. I'm just human. Uh, I'm just human. How many have you ever heard that, that excuse? I'm just human. I'm just human. Uh, but, but, but have you ever told them, have you ever told them, no, no, you're more than human. You're supernatural. Amen. See, what the Lord is trying to get you and I to do for him in this hour, will not, will, it's, not, it's going to take more than human effort. It's going to take more than natural effort. You can't do it no other way except in the spiritual. You cannot do it any other way except in the supernatural life. Is there anybody here with me? You can't change your, listen to me. You and me, if a fly falls right there dead, you and me can't resurrect that fly. If God don't do it, you ain't going to do it. So he says, I want, I want to give you the authority. The, the word authority is used in, in, in two different ways. The word authority in, in the Bible is, 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 is described as, 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 as power. You know, you know, you go to court, you go to court and you stand there for whatever reason, and you know that the guy that's sitting with a black suit with that black robe in front of you, it's got power over you. You know that. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Don't look at me like you don't know. The state of Colorado gave him authority. And he uses that authority over individuals. Hello. Hello. Well, hear, hear what I'm going to say to you. The one that has authority over everything that lives and moves and exists is God Almighty. Yeah. And so, so look at this. So then he says, I'm giving you power. That word power means authority. Authority over what? Look, look over here because you gotta, you gotta hear me. The, this thing could close. This thing could close any moment, and our loved ones will not make it to heaven. And only because, thank you, brother. Only because they have not seen what the spiritual really is. They've heard us nag, complain, murmur. They've heard us all kinds of, do all kinds of crazy stuff. They've seen us fall, get up, fall and get up. They've done all that. So they're looking at us and saying, well, if they're having a hard time, why, why do I want that? Right. 
Oh, look at me. Look at me over here. You see, when, when you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, I'm glad to see Brother Antonio here tonight. When you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, He gives you the power to overcome every circumstance. Your problems, you can hand over to Him and He will take care of them. Are you understanding me? But, but when you take your problems into your own hands and you start dealing with them, how many know we, we do a lot of messes with those? So, so the Lord says to you and me, I'm giving you power. Look at this. When the Holy Spirit, we're not going there because we're going somewhere else, but he says, I give you power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That word power means authority. Autoridad. Authority over the powers of darkness. Authority over Satan's forces. Over every attack of the enemy. He, he gives you power. Te da poder. Is there anybody here with me tonight? Amen. I mean, because see, listen, look, look over here. What you and me don't understand is that many of us, we, 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 uh, we, we start going backwards and we get into all the backbiting, the gossiping, the, the todo, todo el guerrero. And look at this. And we justify it. Well, God knows I'm just human and he understands. And, and we go on and we, we, we make all kinds of, of things for ourselves. But that's not, that's not the truth. God hates gossipers. God hates, I mean, people that, I mean, come on. You know what I'm talking about. So he gives you a born again experience. And you are made anew. Okay, now look at this. But you have the right to decide. You have the right to decide. The, not the devil. God already decided he wants you free. He wants you powerful. He wants to use you. He wants to bless you. He wants to lift you up. God already decided that. that that's a no-brainer. God wants to do all that. All right? But check it out. I want you to check it out with me. But he says... You can either surrender your will to me and live for me. He says, or you can hang on to your will and keep going backwards. Listen, carrying a Bible doesn't make you a Christian. It's obeying that Bible. Or carrying your Bible on your phone. Because you, you're a secret agent. You don't want nobody to know you're a Christian. <laughs> I mean, I mean, imagine. You, you are a powerful, powerful being Amen. in the hands of a living God. Imagine, and, that, and I want to tell you something else. The devil is afraid of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
No, that's a weak <laughs> praise offering to the Lord. <laughs> see, see, he's created you to do what he, what he was doing right here on earth. He's created you to do more. Is there anybody here with me, church? We, we, we were here in, in, in Denver. Some lady was telling me this morning, I didn't know you were on television until I caught you on television. We're on TBN. I go on TBN and, and listen, I don't change my message. I'm not going to compromise my message. I want to preach the word. Okay? And then I'm, I'm on Ventana TV all over, all over the south. I mean, all the way through California, Seattle, and Oregon, and all the places. We're on, on Ventana TV out there, and, and then we're on YouTube, and, and Facebook, and we're on, and why? Because look at, look at this. Jesus said, and greater works than I do, you shall do. If, if we would let go of the negative, if we would let go of all the stuff that, that, that hinders us, my God, the devil would be in trouble. We'd be reaching, we'd be reaching Denver, Lakewood, the, the metropolitan area. We'd be reaching it all for Jesus. Yeah, give him a big praise. I, I mean, I'm telling you, God wants to do some powerful things through you. Through you. Somebody, somebody told me one day, well, we've never he heard that before. And I said, no, you haven't, because most pastors want to look like the, the heroes, you know, the superhero. No, it's not about us. It's about all of us. You look at this. Look at this. You got to see this. You got to see this tonight. All right? God's using me to speak to you. But I want you to know God wants to use you. Praise God. Look at this. And afterwards, he appeared to the 11 apostles themselves as they reclined at table. And he reproved and reproached them for their unbelief. Remember, unbelief is the biggest sin you can have. It will not, it'll paralyze you, won't let you move. Now look at this. Their lack of faith. And their hardness of heart. He's telling you, the Lord is telling you what, what the problem was. Because they had refused, look at this. They had refused to believe those who had seen him and looked at him attentively after he had risen from death. They refused to believe. Can you imagine Having a touch of God, God touching your life, and then you turn around and not believe? My God, that's heavy duty. Let's go on. Let's start. Go ahead. Verse 15. Oh, I just want to speak the name. We're going right here. And he said to them, look at this. And he said to them, this Jesus now. And he's speaking to his disciples. But if you, if you put it in the right context, he's speaking tonight to you and I. From 11, it has exploded all over the world. It's grown. You are his disciple. But, but listen, but look over here. But now you have to make up your heart and mind. Are you going to, are you going to live on chapter 14 as an unbeliever? Or are you going to come back down to chapter 15 and become a believer and do powerful things? Listen, you cannot live your life. You just cannot live your life as a gossiper and a slanderer and everything else in life and do mighty works for God. 
These are supernatural works. These are powerful works. Oh, you better hear me tonight. These are supernatural. These are not normal or natural. These are not things that are done just, man, my God, when I got saved, when the Lord touched my life, I, I had to ask the Lord, is this for real? I, I, just, I couldn't believe something had happened to me. Because it was in the supernatural realm. Oh, you better hear me tonight. I, 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 was, I was living, amen, I was living in the natural, that when the supernatural came, man, it just blew my mind. You might have been born again and still want to live in the natural. And you're missing, you are missing the real intent of your salvation. The real purpose the real reason why the Lord saved you. And that was to use your life and to be able to touch a world that doesn't know him. Are you with me, church? I said, are you with me? I told you before, my pastor, when I got there, man, my pastor was hurting so bad. And, 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 and there was a, a brother doing a lot of wrong to him. And, and try to take everybody away from him and listen to me. And the Lord spoke to me and told me, I brought you here. I came all the way from New Mexico over here. And the Lord told me, I brought you here. He says, I want you to be his hands, his feet, and his mouth. I want you to stand by him and I want you to help him. That's all the Lord told me. But I already had my agenda given to me. So I knew I had a purpose for being there. You know, you have a purpose tonight for being in this building, for being in this church with New Hope Ministries, with Pastor Ray. You got a purpose. You're not here by coincidence. You're not here just because all of a sudden your television broke and you had nothing more to do. And if it broke, it was probably the Lord that broke it for you. My God, are you with me? Imagine, imagine, he wants to use you. And you might say, well, who am I? I'm nobody. That's why he wants to use you. Because you are nobody. He, he can't use the somebody. He can't use the somebodies. Because the somebodies think they're better than everybody else. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. Preach it. So he has to go get the nobodies. I mean, brother, my God, he gets us and he changes us, he transforms us, gives us a new life, a new beginning, and he says, go get them. Now look at this, look at this, look at this. He says here, and he said to them, after he reproved them, this was the, the 11 because one was gone, the 11, and he reproved them, that's what the Bible says. And look what it says, and he said to them, go into all the world, your neighborhood, your job, because you, you, you're not going to go all over the, the world, and I know that, you can't afford all that and everything. But, but one thing he does know, if he could get enough of you to start telling everybody in Denver, everybody in Lakewood, and everybody in the metropolitan area, and you get away from all the junk that, that everybody else wants to bring in, and you start telling the world about what Jesus did for you, and what he can do for them, and how he loves them, and how he can, oh, let me tell you something, by the time you know it, man, you're reaching Denver, you're reaching Lakewood, you're reaching the metropolitan area, and... Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a powerful God. I had I had somebody tell me tonight, hey, did 
did you tell this lady to come and talk to me about her problems? I said, I don't even know the lady. I says. And she said, he said, well, she said, a pastor told you. I says, not this pastor. <laughs> Brother, we got, we got pe- people, listen to me. Can I give you a statistic? Every second, somebody is dying and going to hell. Imagine. You and I don't got time to gossip. We ain't got time for all that garbage. We got to reach our loved ones. We, we got to reach our, we, we got we to gotta reach our neighbors, our friends. Oh, no, listen to me. This is real business. This is authority. God says, I'm giving you the authority to go get them. I'm giving you the power. I'm giving you the anointing to do a work for me. Praise God. Are, are you with me tonight? This, this, is, this is important, church. This is important. You know, I love that family right there, and then we're praying for you, and so we're praying for your loved one to come back. That's the, I know what it feels like. I had my daughter. My daughter already passed away. She, she, she barely, made it, barely made it, but she made it to heaven. But, but let me say this to you. Get so mad at the devil... Get so mad at the devil that you tell the devil, you see, you, 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 think, you're going to, you think you're going to mess us up? Well, wait till, wait till we mess you up. We're going to go reach everybody for the Lord. <laughs> what a powerful God. Are you with me? And I told you my pastor was crying. He was there and the Lord told me, you stand by him. Stand by his, be his mouth, his hands and his feet. So I did. I stood with him. I stood there for three years helping him. And check it out. By the time I got there, almost everybody had left the church because he had somebody gossiping and backbiting him and doing all kinds of stuff behind him. And, and uh, the Lord said, go help him. So I went in there to help him. And the Lord put me, listen, listen, you want me to tell you how the Lord does things? The Lord put me to work I was working with this guy at Cuners. How many have ever heard of Cuners? That, that was a little company, canning company that was in Brighton. And I would work there part-time. Whenever I wasn't out giving revivals, I would come there and the guy would give me a job. So I was working there and I meet this guy by the name of Richard. And he didn't know how to drive. So he couldn't drive. He didn't have a car. And one day it was raining so hard and I sat him out there waiting for his wife. And I thought to myself, man, poor lady, she's going to have to come out in this rain. So I told him, call your wife, man. I said, and tell her I'll take you home. So he called her and she stayed home and I went and, 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 and took him home. But see, you never know what God does. Amen. All right? So I took him home and I drive up right next to their curb to let him off. And she goes out there to the car, and I'm playing a, a, a cassette tape. Back then, it was a cassette or something like that. You know, it was way back then. Uh, anyway, I, I, I was playing a Jimmy Swaggart cassette, and she loved that music. And she says, where did you get that music? Oh, sister, I said, I took it out of my thing. I said, here, you can have it. Oh, are you sure? I said, sure, go ahead. I gave it to her. God broke, God broke the ice. Are you with me? That whole family, I reached her, her whole family, her brother's family, her friends, and I started having Bible studies and prayer meetings in their home. And, and, and remember I told you the church was empty? Well, I started filling it up. Ah, oh, you're not hearing me. Come on. I started filling that church up. And then the ones that left said, we better get back. If we don't get back, we're we're not going to have it. They're going to take our seat. (laughs) How many know Christians Christians like certain seats? I don't know why. I don't know why they think, if I don't get that seat, man, that seat there's got my, I've already shaped it. (laughs) Oh, Lord, have mercy. 
Huh? This don't happen where you're from. I know that, but it happens here, sister. Uh, so, so imagine we filled it up. And as long as I was, three years I was there, when I left there, it was still packed out. Is there anybody here with me, church? Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. I didn't have time. Hey, I'd be out there on the street. I'd be out there on the streets and everything. And look at this. Look over here at me. And, 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 and people would try to stop me to gossip or talk. And I'd say, brother, brother, brother. I says, listen to me. I says, if you don't want to miss heaven... I would tell them, you better get out of that. Or you're going to go to hell with it. I was straightforward. I've always been. And brother, by the time I know it, they were calling me, asking me to forgive them for what they said. And they were coming back. I said, don't ask me. I said, you go talk to the pastor. Oh, God began to change things. Oh, me están entendiendo, me están escuchando. God wants to use you. Look at this. And he said to go into all the world and preach and publish openly the good news, the gospel. It's good news. Man, there's somebody that can change you. Somebody that can give you a new life. Somebody that can give you a new beginning. Somebody that can lift you up. Somebody that can mend your home. Somebody that can help your marriage. Somebody that can heal your body. Somebody that can do something powerful for you. I mean, good news. Somebody that can deliver you from drug addiction, from alcoholism, from perversion, from all that stuff. There's a God in heaven that does everything. Listen, all he needs is you and I. He needs you and I to get going with this. Go into all the world and preach and publish openly the good news, the gospel to everyone, to every creature of the whole human race. Everyone you, you get in touch. Listen to me. I, I used to carry, my pockets were like that with tracks. I couldn't drive because I had a vehicular homicide case going. And I couldn't drive, but I filled my pockets with tracks, bro. And I'd walk all over town and down, up and down the streets. I'd go to the, the supermarkets where there was a lot of people. I'd go to the, to the Wendy's and the, and the Burger King and all over where everybody was all stuff in their mouth. Man, I'd go over there and put a track in their hamburger. <laughs> hey! Everywhere. They're all over. And they're hurting. They just don't know how to get help. They just don't know who can help them. They don't know how to do it. Come on, you know that. I know that. I was telling, Brother Antonio, I was telling uh, uh, somebody the other night, when I first started going to the Adams County, Way back, way back, there was a guy there. I don't know if you, if, if you knew him, but I'll remember his name pretty soon. I'll let you know who he was. But, but this guy was there for a murder beef. And, and, and I, I told the Lord, I don't want to go in the jails and that. I didn't want to go into all that stuff. And, and the Lord says, I want you to go. And I said, I don't want to go. So I walked into the to the to the, the main lobby where the captains and all of them stand, to the sergeant and all that. And I went over there and asked her, hey, do you need a preacher in here? They said, that's the last thing we need. <laughs> I said, thank you. I walked out. I walked out, man, and I'm walking down the street, and then I get a phone call. It's a lady from the Bible bookstore. And she said, Ray, I need you to go see some guy in the jail, Mike Uliberry. Did you know him? And, and, and he says, she says, I need you to go see him. I says, okay. I said, I'll go in and see just him. I'm talking to her like that. I'll just go see him. So I went in there, and I brought him to the Lord. I prayed for him, 
And the Lord filled him with the Holy Ghost. Right there, he starts speaking in tongues. Right there. Give the Lord praise. So then, he went to the back and he started telling everybody back there. So after a while, everybody was calling me. They wanted a, a visit. So finally, the, the captain or the sergeant, whoever he was, he tells me, you know what? There's too many people that want to see you. He says, so what we're going to do is give you a room. And after a while, we had everybody walking around with Bibles. Antonio knows that. He was there. Everybody walking around with Bibles. Man, they were going to Bible study. They were, man, people were getting saved and everything. And, 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 the, and, the, and the guards got scared. They said, these guys are planning something. <laughs> they didn't know we're planning to go to heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them, tell them. Don't hold back, tell them. Get involved, get involved in other people's lives. I know you're carrying burdens. I know you're carrying, we're going to pray for you tonight. We're going to pray for, for your burdens tonight. We're going to pray that God will lift you up. Yeah. Like we're, going to, we're going to give every need, every problem, every situation, we're going to give it to the Lord. Are you, are you with me tonight? So look at this. Let's go on. Verse 16. He who believes, who adheres to and trusts in and relies on the gospel, and him whom it sets forth and is baptized, will be saved. Will be saved. Imagine he's saying, there are going to be many, many people you're going to be able to affect. You're going to be able to affect them. Look at this. But he who does not believe, who does not adhere to and trust in and rely on the gospel and him whom it sets forth will be condemned. Why, why, why do we, listen to me, why should we care? Why should we go out there? Because if God loved us so much to set us free, why should we go out there and try to help others find the same thing you found? Why should they have an opportunity, a chance to make it to heaven? I think everybody deserves a chance. Don't you? Amen? Amen? So look at this. Look at verse 17. And these attesting signs will accompany those who believe. These signs are going to follow you. In my name they will drive out demons. Amen. Somebody was telling me the other night, I don't know if it's true or not because I don't, I don't know that, but they were telling me the other night that they said, I think there's only a couple of churches in the whole city that cast out demons anymore. And they said, and your church is one of them. I said, wow. There are churches tonight, and I don't want to put churches down, but there are churches tonight where a demon-possessed person can go to, and instead of praying for him to be delivered, they'll ask him to leave. But the Lord took them there to set them free. That they would find a new life, a new beginning. Is there anybody here with me? So, so look at this. In my name it will drive out demons and they will speak in new languages or in tongues. They will speak in tongues. Oh, Lord. I don't like all that. I don't want all that. What do you mean you don't want all that? It's going to give you victory. You need it. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. He'll give you victory. Praise God. I don't know about you. I want victory. Look at this. Verse 18. And they will pick up snakes. Is it the great, the biggest snakes? Listen to me. He's not telling to go. He's not telling you to go out there and find rattlers and all that early. Listen, listen to me. The biggest snakes you can find sometimes are sitting in church. You and I have got to get them and pray for them and tell me the name of Jesus. I'm taking your poison out. Come on. You're going to be born again. And even if they drink any deadly thing, imagine there are people, I knew a, a brother way back, that a preacher in fact, he went to a church to preach and somebody gave him a, a glass of poison. It had poison in it. And he drank it. He didn't know. He drank it. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. I know that the Word of God blessed you richly. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to Him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Him, today would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you. Till the next time, amen.